Are properties just resemblances between objects? Let's consider. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher Show, where we consider the greatest questions of human history. In our playlist on properties, we've been considering nominalism recently. Remember nominalism, the gist of it is that properties aren't real. Uh, basically what it's saying is that they're not entities or uh, real parts of the objects that have them. Instead, when we say that properties are, are had by objects, those are still going to be true statements, but we're going to have to explain why they're true. There's going to have to be some kind of explanation that doesn't involve properties being real. So what, what kind of explanation could we have? Well, in class nominalism, we said that properties were nothing more than class membership, right? To have a property, making that statement true is just being a member of a class. So remember, we had those two red dots, Kevin and Gary, and we asked, what makes it true that Kevin is red or Gary is red? It's just that Kevin and Gary are both members of the class of red things. Important to remember, however, is that they don't actually have some property redness, right? That's not a real thing that they have. All it is to have the property redness is to be a member of a class. And being a member of a class, a class is just the stuff that makes it up, right? The class is just the members of the class. There's nothing extra over and above that, that a class is. So um, one thing that was kind of odd about this, and an objection that we had here, is that it seems like having a property should determine the fact that you're in that class. It shouldn't be the fact that you're in a class determines that you have a property, right? That seems kind of backwards. So um, what is it that makes it the case that Kevin and Gary are both in the class of red things? Well, one strategy we could have is to assume something that we were attempting to explain. And that is resemblance. We could say Kevin and Gary are both in the member, they're both members of the class of red things because they both resemble each other in the right way, in the in the red way. They resemble each other and all other red things. So it's this resemblance relation that puts them into the class of red things. So resemblance nominalism says that uh, an object has a property F if and only if it resembles all other objects in that class of things that have the property F. Now, remember we had three phenomena that we were trying to explain. The first phenomenon was uh, predication. How is it that we can say that a property is had by a thing? How is it that we can predicate a property of a thing uh, and make that true? Well, this would explain that by saying that an object A has a property F if and only if object A resembles all other things that have property F. So for example, Kevin is red. That would be like a, an example of predication. What makes that predication true? It's that Kevin resembles all other red things. Now the second phenomenon is the interesting one because the second one is exact similarity. How do we explain when two things are exactly similar? And remember the Platonist would say uh, that they just must be the same thing. So imagine you ran into, I, let's say I, I run into this person on your left and he introduces himself as Kevin. And then uh, you know the guy on the right as Gary and I, meet that guy on the right and I say, Hey, Kevin, what's going on? And there's a little befuddlement between us. You know, how is this possible? Well, Plato's answer would be, they must be the same person, right? And that's a possibility. Another possibility is that they just resemble each other and there's nothing else to explain. It might be the case that they're not the same guy and we can't explain it any more than they just look the same. And that would be the answer here for the resemblance nominalist. The resemblance nominalist would say that the resemblance relation is a primitive relation, where a primitive is something that explains other things, but itself does not need to be explained. It's taken as basic. And so you know everybody in their philosophy somewhere has a primitive. Your primitive might be the law of non-contradiction, but your primitive might be something else. Some people will have primitives that don't make a lot of sense to, that they should be primitives, right? There are some primitives 
that aren't good primitives to take. I won't really get too far into it, um, but the resemblance anomalist would say, this is a good primitive, right? We can't really explain resemblance. It's just a relation that we have to just assume is there, and it's going to explain everything else, but it's not something that we can explain. So whereas uh, pretty much everybody else actually in property philosophy explains exact similarity, the resemblance nominalism says that it's just a primitive thing that does not need explanation. The third phenomenon was abstract reference. Remember, how is it the case that we can refer to properties apart from the things that have them? So our examples were that red resembles orange more than it resembles blue or that red is a color. Right? When I say red is a color, I'm not pointing to any specific red things. I'm not pointing to Kevin or Gary. Right? I'm just saying the color red, the property red is uh, a color. How do we explain these in resemblance nominalism? For resemblance nominalism, reference to properties is just reference to the resemblance relation. So let's say I'm, I'm saying that uh, red is closer to orange than it is to blue. What I'm saying is the red things resemble the orange things more than they resemble the blue things, where remember resemblance is a primitive, um, so we can't really explain it. So that's resemblance nominalism. In the next video, we'll talk about some objections to resemblance nominalism, but let me know what you think. Is this a good improvement over class nominalism? Uh, what do you think? And please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and please support me on my Patreon page, link in the description, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.